Our first video lesson on Chapter 22, Protein Synthesis, is an overview of translation. Translation is the process of translating the language of RNA into the language of protein, and multiple components are required. First, we need our mRNA transcript. This is what we're translating, and it contains the message or genetic code. We also need the molecular machine that synthesizes the protein. This is the ribosome, as it were, our writing instrument. We also need a translator, which in this process is tRNA. Remember, T stands for transfer, but you can think of it as our translator. It carries the amino acid and is responsible for converting the language of nucleic acid into the language of amino acid. And of course, we have the amino acids themselves, what we connect together to make the protein, the words we're using to form our translation. The genetic code is a series of triplet codons, each of which specifies a single amino acid. There are 20 common amino acids, but there are 64 codons. We say, therefore, that the code is degenerate. That is, that multiple codons may specify the same amino acid. In this table containing the standard genetic code, if you look at the lower left for the codons specifying the amino acid valine, we notice that the first two bases are G, U. That third base may be any of the four bases and still specify the same amino acid valine so long as the first two bases are G and U. This is the third base wobble. The code is practically identical in all life forms, so the code would be the same in E. coli or in zebra or in humans. The code also contains three stop co codons outlined by the red boxes. These do not specify amino acids, and we'll see how they factor into the process of translation later. The genetic code is read sequentially from the mRNA transcript. In the illustration here, our message begins with ACC and ends with AGU. If we begin with the first nucleotide in our transcript, our first codon is ACC, and because they're read in sequential order, that gives us a certain sequence of amino acids, threonine, isoleucine, serine, and arginine, based on the genetic code we just looked at. That gives us our first reading frame. We might begin at the second nucleotide in our transcript to give us a second reading frame. That would specify a different sequence of codons and therefore a different sequence of amino acids. In this case, proline, serine, arginine, and glutamate. We may move to the third nucleotide and begin there, and our third reading frame begins with the codon CAU. In this case, a different sequence of codons produces a different sequence of amino acids, histidine, leucine, glutamate, and serine. So for each mRNA transcript, there are three possible reading frames, and this is because our codon contains three nucleotides. So it is important not only that we have the correct transcript, but where we begin will determine the sequence of codons and therefore the sequence of amino acids. In the process of translation, there are three types of RNA that participate. First, we have our mRNA or messenger RNA. Of course, this is our message that contains the genetic code to specify the sequence of amino acids. In the figure on the lower right, that's the pink shaded region. We also have our transfer or tRNA in light green, and it carries the amino acids and reads the code. It does this by complementary base pairing between the codon of the mRNA here highlighted AUG, and the anticodon of the tRNA, here specified as UAC. We'll see how this process works later. Third, we have ribosomal or rRNA. It's actually a part of our molecular machine, the ribosome, that makes the protein product. Highlighted here in brown, we have both a large and small ribosomal subunit. In our next video lesson, we want to look at the basic structure of a tRNA molecule,
and we want to see how we connect the correct amino acid to the right tRNA molecule so that we deliver the correct amino acid in the right sequence.